Mark Wendell here. I'm a product manager at Microsoft working within the OneDrive and SharePoint group um, and specifically within SharePoint Embedded. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can add um, a pro dev custom copilot chat experience to your SharePoint Embedded application. So I'll do a quick overview with some of the slides and things like that, give you some theory. Then we'll code that up together in a demo. And then I'll uh, also share how you can join our private preview that we're doing for that. Okay. So before I start talking about how you can integrate Copilot powered experiences into your SharePoint Embedded apps, I want to do a quick primer on SharePoint Embedded for those that aren't yet familiar. If you haven't come across it, we are doing a series in this call, but if you haven't come across it yet, at a high level, SharePoint Embedded, like its name implies, provides a way for you to embed SharePoint storage into your custom application. It's a headless platform as a service that offers a set of pay-as-you-go APIs on Microsoft Graph that allow you to store and manage content in a Microsoft 365 tenant. So it effectively allows you to create a custom con content partition that is specific to your application inside your user's tenant. And with SharePoint Embedded, you can bring core content management, office desktop and web experiences, and security trim search experiences to your custom application by default. It's built into the platform. You as an app developer don't need to go build it yourself. It just comes as part of the platform. So, um, And if you're an administrator of a tenant who's using an application that's built on SharePoint Embedded, you and your organization get a whole bunch of benefits from that platform too. So first off, you don't need to grant broad permissions to a custom app. You can grant it access to manage its own content partition inside of your tenant, but that doesn't give it access to any other data in your organization, like OneDrive, SharePoint, or other apps. Um, and also because SharePoint embedded content is stored inside your Microsoft 365 tenant, all of the existing security compliance and business continuity requirements that your organization has continued to be met on that application's data. So like e-discovery, audit, retention policies, sensitivity labels, and more, all of that just works by default. So we announced general availability for SharePoint Embedded last week at Build. If if you haven't come across or you wanna learn more, you can check out you know the, the recordings on YouTube from this call, or you can go to that ak.ms slash start dash SBE link. Okay, so that's SharePoint Embedded. The thing I want to talk about today, though, is that uh, bottom item on the right called Copilot Ready. That's what I want to focus on. Um, SharePoint is Copilot Ready by default. Now, um, I mentioned that you know every bit of content that gets put into SharePoint Embedded automatically goes into the lexical search index by default, and that's true, but it also gets put into the semantic index. It, it's the same semantic index that is used by the M365 Copilot system. So that content is not just AI ready by default, but it's also um, security aware. So all of the security descriptors um, that are required to deliver a secure and compliant experience that honors not only like permissions on on that AI content, but also uh, meeting your organization's security and compliance requirements by like honoring information barriers, data residency and access policies. All of that is kind of built into the platform. And so you don't need to worry about it. So the content is AI ready and in a secure, secure aware uh, way as well. Two key points about that. Um, so or two key takeaways from this slide in addition to that. Um, when that when you build your app on SharePoint Embedded, that content is accessible if you want it to be. It's available to Microsoft 365 Copilot. So that means you know you can open up M365 Copilot in Teams or Office.com or wherever you access it, and you can reason over, um, summarize, and interact with the content that is in a custom application built on SharePoint Embedded. So that in and of itself is super powerful. And the thing that we're announcing private preview for is that you have the ability to create a custom copilot and put it into your SharePoint embedded application. And that's the thing that we're going to do a demo on and we'll build it together and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but this is a quick mock-up of what that looks like. So here's an example of um, an HR recruiting application that's built on SharePoint embedded. That is a good candidate, that type of application is a good candidate for building on SharePoint Embedded because it has a whole bunch of files and content. So you might have job descriptions, resumes, interview feedback, hiring policies, and a whole bunch of other content. 
that makes it a good fit to build on SharePoint Embedded. Um, and so within this app, though, we're seeing in that kind of mock-up on the right-hand side, we're seeing a custom co-pilot in action. It's integrated directly into that um, HR Smart app. What, what that allows you to do um, is, you know, you can have a highly tuned, highly customized experience inside that app. So depending, like the real power here is that like you can use dynamic app context to control the chat experience for your users. So whether, you know, depending on that user's role within that app, maybe they're a hiring manager or an HR representative, or they're a candidate even, you can control the chat experiences based on you know, the user's role in the app or where, where they are within your application. If you're looking at a list of jobs or maybe you're looking at hiring policies, you can completely change and customize the chat experience based on that. And so the thing that we're going into private preview with is really two things that you can take advantage of. One is uh, a React component that you can use to just drop uh, this chat experience into your application really quickly. That's what we're going to build together. But there's also an underlying API surface that's, you know, offers a rich set of customizing capabilities that, you know, if you're not using React, you can use that as well. So before we go into building it, just a quick plug for this. Um, if, if this sounds interesting to you or your organization, you can go register your organization to participate in this custom co-pilots private preview program for SharePoint Embedded. Visit that link, aka.ms slash SPE copilot. All right, now we're gonna get into the demo. I'm gonna break out of PowerPoint and I'm gonna open up um, this web browser here. So remember that mock-up that I showed you earlier of that HR recruiting platform? This is a live version of that. So here we're looking at um, a live version of an HR recruiting application, and we're looking at the jobs page. So each of these here is a job posting. Um, and if you're familiar with SharePoint Embedded, under the hood, each of these job postings is actually a file storage container. So it's effectively kind of a headless SharePoint document library that you can interact with. And that's good because not only are we going to have the job posting in here that I can click on, we also have resumes or offer letters, interview feedback. You know, so it really gives you, you know, a container to put all of the content associated with that particular job posting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I clicked into um, that Office document. So nothing to do with Copilot quite yet, but I wanted to just show you, you know, you can interact with Office documents. Here we're looking at the Office web experience. Um, and in here we can, you know, access this office experience directly from our uh, custom HR recruiting application. And, and we can collaborate, co-author, at mention, and do all the stuff that you've come to expect within office experiences. But I am going to get rid of that and we'll just kind of draw your attention to this big empty space here on the right. That is where I'm gonna drop this custom co-pilot into my app. So to do that, I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code and all we have here is an empty React component. What I'm going to do here is we're going to code up together adding this chat component. So I'm going to add the chat embedded React component. That is the component that we're adding in private preview. Um, once I add that, you see that the, it's complaining that I'm missing an auth provider. So in order to have that component actually show up, I do need to give it an auth provider. That is a very simple construct. All it has is... Uh, a method to be able to get a token. And that is getting a token, you know, under the context of my SharePoint embedded application, it's a delegated token for the current user that's accessing it. Okay, so I instantiated that auth provider and then I'm setting it in my React state. The only other thing I need to do now is to actually pass that auth provider as a property to our React component. And I will pass that like so. And one thing is that that could still be undefined. And so I just need to do a quick check to make sure that it's defined before I load that up in my component. Okay, so it is all done complaining at me and I've passed, I've instantiated the component and provider. Now I can go back and with a hot reload in React, you can see in under a minute, we've added a custom copilot into our SharePoint embedded application. And already here, I can ask it um, to do stuff. So show me recent job postings. Now, 
this custom copilot, even though I've just dropped it in, it is already grounded on the content that is in my SharePoint embedded application. So that means that these job postings that we're looking at on the left are actually accessible. And that's what this, this custom copilot is going to be, be able to reason over. So you can see here, I asked it, show me recent job postings. It passed back a couple of those. It can see all of this content in here. And we're getting that kind of familiar custom copilot experience here. So we see these uh, references that are showing up here. We can also, if I wanted to summarize a particular document, um, I can interact with the working set. So if you're familiar with that, I can use the slash here and look at the working set. So see people or files that I've worked with recently. So I'm going to summarize that principal software engineer job posting, send that request off, and it's going to you know scope that result to just that particular file that I referenced from the working set and stream that response back. All right, so in under a minute, we added an already very capable, super powerful custom copilot to our SharePoint embedded application. What I'm going to do now, though, is I really actually want to add some customization to that. You can see here that the default experience is this red here, um, and I also have a title called SharePoint Embedded Chat. I want to give it, you know, more of an identity that matches my Contoso HR recruiting application. So I want to change some of the colors. I want to change this header, and I also want to be able to add some uh, better suggested and zero query prompts. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio Code and I'm going to uh, add that configuration. So I'm going to set this const chat config here and we will set that up. First of all, I'm going to add a header. So I'll have this chat controller, which is just a singleton. And I'm going to give it a theme as well. Um, so a header is really just a string. And I'm saying now it's going to be called Contoso HR Chat. Theme is just an object with a bunch of color properties. I'll set the config and pass that along as a property into my chat embedded React widget. And I'll save that. And it should, um, if everything's working, hot reload. And now you can see we've got blue here. It's matching, it's matching the colors of my particular Contoso HR app. And I've also set the header. But it's still looking pretty plain. I want to get those zero query prompts and suggested prompts in there now um, to be able to you know, kind of give it a bit more uh, useful capability right out of the box. And also, this is just like, again, these zero query prompts are things that I've set. I can control the, you know, the, the look and feel of those. But these things do not have to be statically defined. And I also give it a meta prompt as well, which gives that, uh, gives that chat bot an identity. So I can say that it's a digital assistant and educated on some of our hiring policies and, and hiring practices and values and things like that. So when I save that, it should have hot reloaded as well. And now when I come back, you can see I'm coming up. It already has these zero query prompts where I can see show me recent job postings. I can control the look and feel of that with icons and colors. And I have these suggested prompts on the bottom. Now, the key thing to know here is that this does not have to be statically defined. You know, as I go through my application or different users are using it or even based on the history of my app, I can control what prompts are showing up, how it looks and all of that stuff depending on the app context. That is the superpower here. So it's not only giving it an identity and customizing all of that stuff based on my app in general, but where the user is in my app, what have they been doing, what jobs are they looking at. I can control the experience dynamically. That is super powerful. Um, okay, so now when I go into um, I can use one of these kind of suggested or zero query prompts. I can say, show me recent job postings. Um, and then again, now through through that like kind of convenience, it's going to show me kind of those same job postings that we were looking at before. Now, one thing that I want to be able to do, though, is that I want to also be able to ground the actual underlying content, not just the usability and behavior and experience, but I want to ground the underlying data sources that this custom copilot can reason over, depending on the context or state of my application. And so, like, for example, if I had clicked on show me, you know, this principal software engineer, if I were to, you know, show me recent job postings again, it's not going to change the result because that I've got this, you know, because I've got this set. 
but that's what I want. I want to be able to actually ground the content or what, what this custom copilot looks at, depending on what I have set in my application. And I'll show you how to do that with our API. So I'm going to set on this on API ready here. Um, and that is just going to get um, a handle to the underlying API. So I mentioned that we're going to be shipping a, a React component, but we're also going to have an underlying API that you can use to interact with with that custom copilot. So here I'm going to get a handle to that API and I'm going to set the data sources. So these data sources are coming from different state in my application. And all I'm doing is when that um, when when the changes, I'm going to set that actual as the actual data sources in the custom copilot API. And I do need to pass that to on API ready. I can actually set that. So once I save that, I can go back to my application and I do have to hit refresh because React State didn't update, so it's not going to hot reload. And once that page refreshes, it should look the same, but the behavior is going to be different now. So if I go into Principal Software Engineer and I have that selected, that is actually going to plumb through and set the data sources in the underlying API. And now when I say show me recent job postings, it should actually ground that query to this particular underlying file storage container. And it should only show response from that. So you can see it looks different. It's only responding back with the principal software engineer position. So you can do a whole bunch of powerful stuff for that. You can also ground data sources. Say I wanted to ground it on you know, our hiring policies or resumes or things like that. So you can ground it to the specific context of your application. That is super powerful stuff. All right, that's it for my demo. Uh, thank you very much. Again, if you want to sign up for the private preview, you can go to ak.ms slash SPE Copilot to sign your organization up and to get access to this uh, new capability that we're offering. Thank you very much.